All right, in we go into the draft. Round number two, Team Cynix versus 2 plus 2. Both of these teams victorious in the first round. Our two uh, Masters Division victors well on their way to uh, getting themselves that spot in the finals match. I'm going to do three rounds, and the top two in the Masters Division, after those three rounds, will uh, engage in a best of three finals match. Making sure everybody's getting going on this round. Uh, but we do see the Stitches ban coming out here for the side of Team Cynics. They already they know what they don't want to play, man. They know. Nobody wants to play against Stitches right now. Seems to me like. I don't know if he's I don't know if he's first ban material. Like, I don't know if I'd rather play against an Anubarak or a uh, Stitches more or less, but here we are. Taking their time with this one is 2 plus 2. By the way, 2 plus 2 are uh, your champions from the uh, ESM Cup number 2 last week. We do see the Anubarak ban coming out for the side of 2 plus 2. Uh, not a big shocker there. Again, I think Anubarak is just incredibly strong. It's really hard to give him up. Tassadar, though, has been a very high priority for most teams. Um, his uh, reworked basic attack structure is just completely bonkers once you get that quest completed off that level 1 talent. Plus the sustain he brings is really good. Vision on this map can be uh, fairly helpful in that mid lane. We got that triangle of doom That's a lot of people walk into but don't get to walk out Alright, so the Genji Uther coming out here for the side of 2 plus 2. I really like those pick pickups here. First of all, you don't want to really play Genji without Uther. You know, the D-Shield Dragon Blade combo is really, really strong. But Genji is very, very good on this map for the rotations. Um, it's got good sustained DPS, but he also has the ability to dive in and really get in on those shrine fights when he needs to. Uh, it can be a really big factor. Plus, um... Sustain can be very good on this map. It is a good strategy for trying to stay in and uh, keep yourselves alive and, and well. But it's also worth noting that uh, it can be good to have the burst healing for when you actually do go in and shrine fight. So it kind of just depends on, on how you want to do it. All right, so Vala Varian coming out. So they, they go ahead and secure the hyper carry that they want for this match. 
to pair with the Tassadar, the Valas. Valas is usually pretty highly contested nowadays. Um, that's kind of always been highly contested. Can't remember a meta where Vala wasn't very um, wasn't very active in it. Varian gonna come out though. I think mostly as a Genji counter, they're gonna be looking to get the taunt out onto the Genji and pull him in. We'll have to see what Uther says about that. Ariel gonna be the ban out here for two plus two. Um, Vala, a very common Ariel battery. Also, Ariel probably one of the most prominent um, prominent. Uh, factors in, in double support right now. So we constantly see it being paired up with things like Tassadar or um, an, another healer in general like the Brightwing or uh, Rhaegar. Even, even Uther we've seen it paired with. Uh, Zarya. The Haka, a ban out here for Team Cynic. Still needing a tank. Still wanting their solo laner. The global, really strong. Really like that band from Team Cynics. Solid. So need a frontliner here. Probably want uh, probably want to pick up their tank now before the side of Team Cynics has the chance to uh, pick up their tank. Plus they need a solo laner. It's always better to be the the last one to pick your solo laner if you can. Still, still a few good options. Um, if you're 2 plus 2 right now, though, you want to look for some kind of ranged poke damage. Something that can chunk down members of the side of Team Cynics and uh, be able to really uh, allow that Genji, afford him the opportunity to go in. If you're a Genji, you don't want to go in when the when the enemy team is still relatively high health because you'll just get blown up. So uh, Nazebo is going to be that wear down poison damage. Good late game hero, which we see Dragonshire going to the late game fairly often. Johanna, also, uh, I really like Johanna on this map as well. Good good shrine presence. Uh, she has the ability, uh, much like on Brax's holdout that we saw in the last game, she has the ability to push into those and... Um, do a nice job of just controlling those shrines and zoning out in the mid if you need to uh, have somebody to be able to block the Dragonite capture. She's also very good for um, denial for that. Still need a solo lane here from Team Cynics. They could conceivably send up the Tassadar for that, but ideally you want your Tassadar and your healer with Vala, and then you want a solo laner in the top lane. So that is going to be Thrall. Let me go ahead and pick up their second frontliner. And Stukov is going to be their main healer. So again, good sustained healing coming out from Team Cynix. A lot like what we saw in the last matchup for them. Still need the solo lane from 2 plus 2. They could put Nazebo in the solo lane if, if they desire. Uh, but he's, he's, going to, he's going to want to be in the four-man rotate to be able to pick up stacks to build the late game. If they have to stick him in the solo lane... That is not going to be ideal. It's, uh, it's doable, but not ideal. So. Let's see how that comes out. What they want to go with. The Haka already off the table. So they have a couple different options. You know, Zagara has been something we've seen on Dragonshire occasionally. Um, could also possibly see something like a Leoric. Um, Thrall's a really strong solo laner, though, so they're going to they're gonna ideally want to go with something that's a ranged solo lane, so they do go with the Falstad. Uh, also really good for the global ability. You know, if you can't get to Hakka, Falstad is kind of the next best thing. Also a really good disengage potential. If, he, if they decide to go Gust, they can just um, disengage from Team Cynics and come in for an engage when they're ready. Falstad also really good at throwing in that hammering and chunking down members for uh, Genji to try and go in and finish and get those resets. Solid drafts coming out from both of these teams. I think I like the side of Team Cynic's uh, draft a little bit better because I do like the sustain 
for, for getting in on these shrine fights. Um, but there is still a decent amount of uh, end gauge potential for 2 plus 2. They're definitely going to be looking to control the end gauges. So I think if, if, they can, if they can do that, if they can really control the end gauges well, and I think that's going to that's gonna turn out to be their, their victory song in this one. We are here for ESM tournament number three. It is going to be two plus two versus Team Cynic squaring off here in round number two in this best of one. On the left, it is two plus two. Masher Hero going to be playing the Genji. Boy, does that fit. Axon going to be on the Nazebo. Redder uh, looks like he's going to be playing Uther. Yeah, got that. Hollis on the Johanna and McNulty going to be on the Falstad. On the right, it is Team Cynics. Valmar going to be on the Vala. Uh, Vareno on Thrall. Kalo going to be playing the Tassadar. Xander on the Stukov. And Caleb Reese going to be playing the Varian. Mashahiro looking to uh, find where the side of Team Cynics is. That's mostly because Team Cynics is down here trying to get this first turret. Stukov comes in, there's Xander trying to put down that silence, forcing them to uh, shut up a little bit on the retreat there. Shahiro using that mobility, getting around, trying to be a general nuisance to the side of Team Cynics. They rotate down five for the defense. They actually keep their turret alive by just a smidgen there. And then showing uh, a solid wave clear potential that they do have here. Oh, but Kahlo end up going down here, Mashiro. I'm not sure if he got the reset off of that. But uh, definitely got the kill. That's going to be first blood going over to 2 plus 2 already in this one. And the rotation is on. They've got a really strong four-man rotation here. Um, and they're going to be trying to pick up those Nazebo stacks for Axon. The top lane, we got McNulty going up against uh, Vareno. It's going gonna, it's gonna to be, a, it's gonna be a, um interesting matchup here. I do believe it's going to end up favoring Thrall, but uh, I'll have to see how they play it out. Right now, both of these shrines are already owned by 2 plus 2, but Team Cynics goes ahead and gets the pickoff onto the Genji. It's going to be uh, evening out the the kill count here, 1 to 1. Moreno getting the better of that top lane, goes ahead and grabs the beacon. McDulty going to rotate up upwards there to force Moreno to keep stay honest here. Not going to let him just sit on these um, idly, but Xander will go ahead and grab the bottom one. So now um, Red are going to have to keep an eye on it until they can get one of these beacons back. Two-man rotation to the top, though. Mashahiro actually rotating up and is going to grab that beacon for a moment, trying to kite the thrall around, but the root comes down. Deflect to counter. But uh, Moreno definitely get, getting the better of that matchup. Pushes them back once again. He's dominating in that top lane. He's even going to get Caleb Reeson on it. Mishiro barely going to make it out. Going to have to hit that B button in the bottom lane, meanwhile. Side of Team Cynic still owning this uh, this shrine. I'm going to go ahead and pick up both. But nobody moving right towards that Dragon Knight just yet. I'm just controlling the map at the moment. We saw this last game from Team Cynics where they were just trying to hold on to... Uh, Make sure they don't lose the map objective. But uh, they actually pick it up this time. Caleb Reese rotating down there. Going to pick up that Dragon Knight. Xander with the with the heals. That bio kill switch. Caleb Reese doing a nice job. Staying up in the top part of this lane. Not taking aggro from both the turrets. But going to take a chunk out of that front wall. And rotate up. Nolte's got to be careful here actually. Gets rooted. Go ahead and barrel roll his way on out of there. Caleb Reese seeing that rotation to the bottom. Go ahead and go back in on this front wall. And get this mid front wall. McNulty actually flying down. I'm going to leave Thrall alone in the top lane. It uh, looks like he's going to clear the mid and then probably rotate back up. Four man rotation to defend here in the bottom against the Holy Trinity. That is uh, Vala, Tassadar, and Stukov. Oh, but Xander getting caught off in the Nazebo wall. Shihiro goes in on it. They get a ton of damage down onto Xander, and that is going to be a pick 
for the side of 2 plus 2. We'll give them a, an opportunity to push as a 4 man. But the Dragon Knight goes ahead and gets that wall in the top lane. Moreno had already softened up that front wall, so easy pickings for the side of Team Cynics. Caleb Reese in the mid, soaking here against Mashihiro. Gonna be interesting. Uh, we see uh, full tank build coming out. Definitely main tanking in this one. Gonna be looking to get the uh, as many as many of those uh, many of those uh, protection statuses as possible. Have them be as impactful as possible. Oh, and Genji and Thrall uh, both going down here. Trading out the kill count here. One to one. Not a whole lot of kills so far in this one. Both teams mostly have been focusing on the macro. Both teams going to go ahead and pick up their, uh, their siege camps. Full Spire build coming out from the Zeebo. He's almost done with that one. More globes still needed for Hollis there on the Johanna. You see Xander getting caught off yet again in the uh, wall, but not as much follow-up ready for it this time. Let's check those in the Zeebo stacks real quick, shall we? Looks like, uh, nope, that's not it. Five? There we go. How are we doing on, how are we doing on Voodoo Ritual stacks here, buddy? show it that's kind of strange okay well I guess that's that well wow, Thrall and Tacit are getting picked off here Caleb Reese is gonna get the return kill onto the Genji and force them back off of that camp but uh, we do see McNulty rotating to the top gonna help try to push this a little bit barrel rolls over so they should be able to capture the shrine for the moment, but Vala falling also in the bot lane. Action all over the place on this map all of a sudden. These shrines come up and all of a sudden everybody wants to team fight. Level 10s are here. Force Wall coming out for Tassadar. Kahlo going to go ahead and try and hit the zoning buttons there. Flailing Swipe, Rain of Vengeance, Earthquake. So uh, they're, they're mainly looking to zone following up that taunt. X-Strike coming out here for, for the Genji. Taunt coming down onto Axe and the wall to try to follow it up. Valamore is here. D-Shield comes out though from Redder. He'll be able to get Axe and out of there. Much a hero getting poked down here. Little Reese goes in after him. They are going to be able to block the Dragon Knight being captured for the moment. Thrall rotating up is going to try to see if he can Grab that shrine. We'll see if uh, Falstad has anything to say about that. Looks like not. And actually, they're going to go ahead and recap both of these. And all of a sudden, it's the side of 2 plus 2 that's got to worry about a Dragon Knight capture. Rotate down and recap the bot, though. That three man, Caleb Reese, can't quite deal with that much harassment. And Nulti flying down. They're going to get some damage out on Kahlo, forcing that dimensional shift. Throws the hammer right at Valamore. And Xander gets caught out by that Nazebo wall. The X-Strike hits. The damage comes down. And Stukov also falling. With all that damage. Good focus fire there from the side of 2 plus 2. Didn't even need the Gargantuan to do that one. And the taunt comes out onto Genji, though. The return kill is real. Axon also in a lot of trouble. But the 3... Man, a uh, Nazebo wall catches everybody but Valimar. That was an interesting. That was an interesting uh, uh, multi-shot there. Not sure, if that was meaning to go the other direction, I think he might have had the kill there on Axon, but uh, so, uh, putting that backwards multi-shot. It's okay. It's okay. Nobody, nobody saw that. Valimar, we're we're good. We're good. Nobody saw it. <laughs> we do see the rotation. By Team Cynics, though, they are going to go ahead and rotate out and grab that bottom beacon. They're going to recollapse here. Level 13. Still a little ways out. Axon trying to figure out where Team Cynics is here. Hollis ready for the interrupt. Kahlo going to go ahead and 
bait him out here, force him to come in and, and at least defend this. Gallo taking a little bit of poke damage, but the taunt comes down onto the Falstad. The D-Shield also, though, in, the, in return, Red are able to save McNulty. Xander going to go ahead and try and zone a little bit, but Mashiro is here. The X-Strike hits, and again, Stukov falls. The healing power is going to shortly be gone here, and suddenly this is turning into a full team wipe. It turns into at least a four for nothing. Milty going to fly up to the top and be able to grab that. The camps are still pushing in the bottom. They have the bottom beacon, so they only need this top one at the moment. Mushihiro ready to take that as soon as it's capable. What do you see? Uh, have some results in. It looks like uh, Bad Wolf has one versus Christian Lee Mingle. Kick coming out onto Vareno. Right away, Mashahiro just looking to get some solid damage out onto this mid keep. Gonna go ahead and throw one more flame breath out. He's gonna back up and start rotating to the bot where Hollis has been helping out this camp push through the bot. Side of two plus two. Making sure they're out soaking every lane. Zebo still building those stacks. And Xander, once again, zoning them back here. Boys, do you do see the collapse coming in? As they try and uh, push this back, push Mashiro back. But they get the bottom fort. They're going to rotate up, get this uh, mid fort as well. And the level 16 is here. Three level lead coming out for 2 plus 2 here in the early game. 11 kills to 7, so they're getting a lot from the kill count. Hollis is going to go ahead and go in and get the engagement here. Earthquake is going to be uh, hit in return, though. Hollow very low. The gust out, actually. Gonna zone them away from this earthquake. Now it looks like they might be ready to turn and fight now that this earthquake has dropped off. Taunt is now back up. Caleb Reese looking for it, but uh, right away the D-Shield coming down. Onto Mashahiro. He gets he gets the D shield as well. Before the taunt he gets the D shield before the taunt comes out, I should say. Get some solid damage out there, and that's gonna be a two for nothing exchange. They get the Varian, they get the Tassadar, and now uh Falstad rotating directly to the top. So definitely soak some more, trying to get them further along to twenty here. Still two still a full level and a half away from that level sixteen here is Team Cynics. 2 plus 2 are reminding us that this is their house. They are the ones that are in charge here in the Masters Division. Top of the standings. And they're looking to keep it that way here in ESM. Mushahiro rotating towards the top. Nulti hitting the B button. He's completely out of mana. Oh, but they're looking on a hard rotation here onto Valero. They want a force right here. Even without the Falstad, it should have fly up by this point. The taunt falling down onto the Genji. Hits the reflect button. To try and keep himself alive a little bit. D-Shield still 14 seconds out. Looks like 2 plus 2 might be thinking twice about uh, this engagement. They do spend the Gargantuan. But they go ahead and retreat. Still not level 16, but McNulty going to be caught out here. The taunt comes down. The Reign of Vengeance to follow it up. Full five-man team collapse. And that's going to be a big pick coming for Team Cynics. This is how you play from behind, ladies and gentlemen. You roll around, you look for those picks, especially the comp that Team Cynics has. They have the ability to get these picks. Now that's going to give them a little bit of breathing room to rotate around. The global is now dead for another 30 seconds for the side of 2 plus 2. So it's going to be a little harder for them to split soak. Definitely going to give enough room for Team Cynics to be able to get their level 16, get caught up a little bit, just a little breathing room. Might rotate around and look for another pick here. Caleb Reese is here. The entire team just a little bit behind. They are going to get the taunt off onto Genji. The rain to follow it up and another huge pick as Mushahiro gets caught out in the mid. LMR even throwing down the spray here in mid. And Team Cynics wanting to make sure they uh, 
make their presence known here in the world of ESM. Looks like Senior Citizen Discount also picking up a win in that last match. And yet again, McNulty gets caught out. This one was by, by Valero and Caleb Reese. But uh, McNulty maybe getting a little bit greedy in here. And the staggered deaths starting to really take their toll here on the 2 plus 2 as Valimar goes ahead and picks up that Dragon Knight. Be marching it into the mid here. Be taking down this mid fort. Now they're only a level behind here. The side of Team, Team Cynics. They are bringing this one back. Do have a camp pushing in top. It's picked up by 2 plus 2 there, but uh, Team Cynics not worried about that. They are worried about getting structure damage while they have this Dragon Knight. Xander zoning with that lurking arm. They get the front wall of, that, of this mid keep, and they're going to go ahead and rotate down to bot. They've got a fourth that they can get here. Trying to zone out here, though, is uh, Hollis on the side of 2 plus 2. They do successfully push them back here. They don't really want to take a full 5v5 team fight while somebody's in the Dragon Knight. Um, especially when it's your Vala. It's your main damage. So you don't really want to take that fight. A couple members will rotate up here to clean up this top lane. It's not going to be in time. But you got to watch for the rotation. Mushihiro wants to force right here. McNulty not quite being able to barrel roll over the wall, but Kahlo actually caught out here by that force wall. Not sure if that's where he meant to put that. The Earthquake also trying to zone for him in vain. Moreno gets out, but uh, maybe a big pick for the side of 2 plus 2 as they are back in action here as 5. They, they play a little patiently there while the Dragon Knight is up. They get 5 alive. Suddenly, they turn around and get a pick of their own. Now, this is turning into a slugfest as uh, D-Shield and Gust both going to be dropped there to get Hollis out of that. Yeah, not quite what they wanted to uh, use in terms of resources there, but do successfully get everybody out. They can back up, grab 20. Tassadar will be back alive, but if they have this 20 Storm Tier talents here, that's going to be a big deal. Waiting for these uh, ults to come up as well. Let's see. So it does look like Nazebo has completed his stacks. He does have the 171. So uh, we're going to see Axon becoming a beast here in the late game. I don't know if there's... Is there anything more scary... Then a level 20 Nazebo with his sacks completed. I don't believe so in this game. Hollis and getting in with the Condemn. Trying to trying to get the end gauge, but mostly just trying to zone so they can get some damage down on this keep. But they are going to start going in here. They know they have the level 20. The taunt comes down, but Indestructible will keep Hollis alive for the moment. The X-Strike comes down, but Johanna will eventually fall. Uther dying, but he has... Uh, redemption, that level 20 talent. He'll be coming back alive. So really, they tra they tra end up trading out Stukov for Johanna. And that's just fine with them. Shahira goes in. They'll get the pick on Varian as well. And uh, 2 plus 2. Taking advantage here. Pushing through the bottom lane with two members down. No tank, no healer. Just the, uh, just the Tassadar shields. They are going to go in on this. McNulty gets rooted. Valero trying to get, in, get him in from the side. But Mashihiro will come in, force Vareno back. They get 28% off of the core. And they're going to call it a day. They're going to go ahead and get out of here. Stukov coming up. But they are going to get the Dragon Knight out of this. It should be a pretty easy rotation for these guys. They're going to put Mashihiro in it again, I believe. McNulty grabs that top one. And uh, unfortunately, Team Cynics knows they can't really block this. They don't have the... Uh, don't have the people available. Johanna now back alive as well. Ten seconds until Varian is back. So they're going to start slowly rotating towards this bottom. Clearing out mid here so they'll get a little bit of mid pressure as well. Go ahead and guide the first of these catapults on into the bottom lane. 
Still waiting for Johanna to come back. She's actually rotating up through the mid. The taunt comes down onto McNulty, but a ton of return damage onto Caleb Reese. He's got to be careful here. The Condemn coming down. The flailing swipe by Xander trying to zone for them, but the Dragon Knight now on the core. Um, a little bit below half health, but the shields are down. They are working on this core. The ice block comes out from Axon trying to help him zone from Valero, but it's too little too late. The core will fall here, and that's going to be uh, round number two here. Two plus two, picking up a win. Moving to 2-0. Oh. Team Cynic's falling to 1-1 one one here. 